Today I'm going to show you how to knit this wristlet style clutch purse using a circular knitting machine. It's the perfect size for when you're on the run and you just need your phone, wallet, and keys. It features a zipped closure which keeps your items secure and an i-cord knit wristlet which makes it easy to carry. If you use this pattern, please tag me when you share your project at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I'm going to share every step of the process in this video, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase a printable download of the pattern in my Etsy shop linked below. The clutch measures approximately 9.5 inches wide by 5 and 3 quarters inches tall. The wristlet is approximately 7 inches long. In terms of timing, it took me about 20 minutes to knit the purse, 20 minutes to knit the eye cord, and about 30 minutes to seam the pieces and sew the zipper. I have lots more fun patterns and tutorials coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my latest videos. And if you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine templates, books, and patterns, visit dianalevinenits.com. Thank you so much to my viewers who have ordered my products and patterns. It's a huge help in allowing me to continue spending the time developing these patterns and filming and editing the tutorials to share with you. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using a 40 needle circular knitting machine, loops and threads yarn in the color Lippy a 9-inch pink zipper, a darning needle, a crochet hook and a pair of scissors, stitch markers, a sewing kit, and a knitting tag. I'll also be using a pair of US size 9 double-pointed needles to hand knit the eye cord, but if you prefer crochet, you can crochet the wristlet instead. We'll begin by knitting the main piece of the bag. Cast onto a 40 needle circular knitting machine using scrap yarn. Wrap your yarn around the first needle and weave the yarn back and forth along the needles until the end of the row. When you finish the row, place your yarn into the middle tensioner. We'll be removing this yarn at the end so the color doesn't matter. Just make sure it contrasts well with the main color, which will make it easier to seam at the end. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the five rows, cut a tail in the scrap yarn and throw it in the middle of the machine. Then leave a long tail in the main color yarn at least a few feet, because we'll need to use the tail later to seam up the bag, and place it right next to the scrap yarn tail. Hold them close and low as you slowly begin to knit your first row in the main color. For this purse, knit 100 rows in the main color. For this demonstration, I'm using a knitting machine adapter to speed things up a bit, but you don't need to use one to make this project, you can crank the machine by hand for the entire process. When you finish 100 rows, cut a long tail in the main color and throw it in the middle of the machine. Then switch back to the scrap yarn and knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the 5 rows, cut a tail and crank the machine until your work falls off the needles. Pull the work off the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Set aside this piece for now while we knit the eye cord. For my purse, I'm going to be hand knitting the wristlet. However, this part is really flexible. If you prefer crochet, you can come up with your own crochet version, or you can even order faux leather wristlets online. And I believe there's an eye cord knitting machine, but I've never used one myself. That being said, knitting an eye cord is actually really quick and easy, so I'll show you the process and then you can choose how you want to style your wristlet. Grab a pair of US 9 double pointed needles and cast on 4 stitches. I'm using the long tail cast on, but any cast on will work. Knit all 4 stitches. Then, when you reach the end of the row, instead of turning the needle like we normally do in knitting, simply push the stitches to the right side of the current needle, and then start knitting from the beginning again, using the working yarn coming from the left side of the back of the work. Knit all 4 stitches again. When you finish up, repeat the same process again, pushing the stitches to the right side of the needle. After a few rows, you'll see that your knitting is starting to form a round cord. Continue in this pattern until your cord measures approximately 13 inches long. This is pretty flexible, if it's a little bit shorter or longer, it'll still work. When your cord is done, bind off the stitches. Knit two stitches and then pull the first stitch over the second. Then knit another stitch and pull the previous stitch over the new one. Repeat this until you have one stitch left and then pull the yarn tail through and secure with a knot. At this point, I like to thread the yarn onto a darning needle and weave it through a few of the bottom stitches to round out the bottom shape. Leave the yarn tails long because we'll be using these later to attach the cord to the purse. Set aside the cord for now while we move on to seaming the purse. For this project, we'll be grafting the open ends of the tube together. Grafting the sides together is a little more complicated than the typical way we seam most hats or headbands. But if you're new to grafting, you'll get the hang of it after a little practice, and it's such a useful skill because it creates a beautiful seamless join. To graft the sides together, thread the bottom tail onto a darning needle, line up your stitches, and use the yarn tail to go down through the first stitch on the top, and then go up through the stitch that's to its left. Pull the yarn through. Next, go down through the stitch on the bottom, and then up through the stitch directly to its left. Pull the yarn through. 
This time you want to thread the needle down through the stitch that you came up out of on the previous row, then go up through the stitch directly to the left. Next, go back to the bottom layer and thread the needle down through the stitch that you previously came up through. Then go up through the stitch directly to the left and pull your yarn through. I'll show you a closer look at the stitches. Here's how I'm working the top stitches, and here's how I'm working the bottom stitches. Continue in this pattern, alternating between top and bottom stitches until the end of the row. As you're working, you want to pull the yarn tail to bring the stitches together, but not too tight. If you pull too tightly, the stitches on the other side will end up looking too small. If you don't pull tightly enough, they'll end up looking too loose. So as you work, check to make sure that your tension is looking good. I just finished the first half of the row, and here's how the seam will be looking so far. When you start to round the corner, you can turn the work inside out to finish the seam. Here's how the inside of the first half of the seam looks. Continue to the end of the row. When you get to the end, make sure to pick up the last couple of stitches and then tie a quick knot with the two yarn tails. Next, remove the scrap yarn. Unlike when you seam one side at a time, you'll need to unwind around and around the work as you remove the yarn. One side will likely pull off easily. For the side that's a bit more challenging, identify the length of yarn running through the top layer of stitches and begin to pull that length out a few stitches at a time. And once you remove that one length, the rest of the scrap yarn will pull off much more easily. Once you've removed your scrap yarn, tie the two yarn tails with a few knots to secure the ends. Don't trim these or weave them in yet, just tuck them away in the inside for now. Loosen up the work a bit with your hands. The sides of our clutch are now seamed. You'll see that by grafting the stitches together, it creates its own separate line of knit stitches, which brings together the work in a fairly seamless way. Right now I have the seam in the middle of the work, but I'm gonna rotate the work so that the seam is now on the edge. The next step is to seam the bottom of the bag. Identify the two lines of V-shaped stitches that sit flat at the bottom edge. Line them up so they aren't twisted, and then use a few stitch markers to pull the work together. We'll be using the mattress stitch to seam the two sides together, and I'll show you here the bars that we'll be going through. Look for the bars on the inside of the V-shaped stitch on the bottom row here, and the top row here. We'll be alternating between these two stitches during our seam. Thread your long yarn tail onto a darning needle and begin sewing under one of the bars on the top right side, followed by one of the bars on the bottom right side. Continue until you're on the flat part, and then continue alternating, picking up one bar on the top, followed by one bar on the bottom until the end of the row. As you're seaming, the work might end up wanting to twist a bit. Make sure you're keeping an eye on the entire piece and double checking that you're picking up the correct bars. Having the stitch markers in place will help a lot with this. Continue seaming the mattress stitch, pulling off the stitch markers as you get near them, until the end of the row. When you reach the end, stitch through the last remaining hole, and then thread the yarn into the inside of the bag. At this point, you can secure your yarn tails with a few solid knots, and then use your darning needle to weave the ends into the inside of the work and trim the ends. Check the inside of your bag and see which side has the cleaner looking seam. If the inside looks better, turn the work inside out. If the outside looks better, leave it. Our bag is starting to come together. Next, I like to add a knitting tag to all my work. Normally, I add my knitting tag as the last final touch, but because I'll be sewing the zipper into the top of the bag, I need to add my knitting tag to the work first. You can place your tag wherever you prefer, or you can skip this part altogether. Personally, I like to place it on the right side of the work with the beginning of the zipper, which will start on the left side. Now that my knitting tag is attached, it's time to sew the zipper. I'm using a nine inch zipper, and I'll link below to the zippers I ordered for this project, which came in a big bag with lots of different colors. Place your zipper into the top of the bag and get a feel for where you want it to sew into the work. I used a few pins to keep the zipper in place while I'm sewing. If you can, find a thread color that matches the main color of your work. But if it isn't perfectly matched, I wouldn't worry about it too much because you shouldn't see it too much from the outside. Place the thread into a regular sewing needle and bring it through to create two layers of the thread. Tie a few knots at the bottom of the two threads. Begin by bringing the needle through from the part of the zipper that will be hidden in the back. Then push the needle through the zipper to the outside of the bag. I bring the needle under the first line of stitches. It's a little tough to see the small needle here, so I'll point to the line of stitches I'm referring to. Sew as closely as you can to the zipper area so there won't be any of the fabric showing when you close your purse. When you reach your knitting tag, sew as closely as you can to the edge, and then weave the thread through only the zipper fabric behind the tag, and then start again as close to the tag as possible. Continue sewing all the way around to the end of the row. When you start to turn the corner, unzip the zipper so that you can sew the second half onto the other side of the bag. Continue sewing until the end of the zipper. If you want to secure the zipper even more, you can sew another round around the bottom of the fabric area of the zipper, and you can also try using a back stitch while you're working, bringing the yarn back after each stitch. When you finish the zipper, 
secure the thread with a knot on the underside of the zipper fabric. Our clutch is almost complete. The last step is to add the I-cord to the zipper. If your darning needle is too big to fit through the zipper, use the pointy part of the needle to push the yarn tail through to the other side. Then use the needle to push the other yarn tail the other way through the zipper. Next, tie the two yarn tails together firmly a few times to secure the knot. Then you can stitch through the bottom area a few times to make the join look nice and round. When you're done, weave the yarn tail up through the I-cord and then trim the tail. Our wristlet clutch purse is complete. If you make this project, please tag me on social media when you share your work, at Diana Levine Knits on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you'd like to support the channel, visit my Etsy shop to purchase the digital download for this pattern. And visit dianalevinenits.com to check out all my books, templates, and patterns. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I publish my latest patterns and tutorials.